Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship as we gather on this feast day in the life of the church, a feast set aside called Corpus Christi, the body of Christ, to celebrate the great gift of the blessed sacrament that Jesus Christ has left, that we might be strengthened and renewed in faith throughout our earthly pilgrimage. As we gather this day, we welcome all who have come among us, and we invite and remind all baptized Christians to leave Christ's presence and sacrament, that you're welcome to commune with us as we worship today. Friends, I invite you to rise as we share together in the rite for confession and absolution. <clears throat> Come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake God forgives us all our sin. As a fallen ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace let us pray to the Lord. Peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. and for all who offer here their worship and praise. Let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Almighty and ever-living God, in this wonderful sacrament you have left us a memorial of your passion. Grant us, we pray, so to revere the sacred mysteries of your body and blood, that we may always experience in ourselves the fruits of your redemption. As you live and reign with God the Father in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Exodus. Moses came and told the people all the words of the Lord and all the ordinances. And all the people answered with one voice and said, All the words that the Lord has spoken, we will do. <clears throat> and Moses wrote down all the words of the Lord. He rose early in the morning <coughs> excuse me, and built an altar at the foot of the mountain and set up twelve pillars corresponding to the twelve tribes of Israel. He sent young men to the people of Israel who offered burnt offerings and sacrificed oxen and offerings of well-being to the Lord. Moses took half of the blood and put it in basins 
and half of the blood he dashed against the altar. Then he took the book of the covenant and read it in the hearing of the people. And they said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do, and we will be obedient. Moses took the blood and dashed it on the people and said, See the blood of the covenant that the Lord has made with you in accordance with all these words. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, I invite you to rise. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the first day of unleavened bread, when the Passover lamb is sacrificed, Jesus' disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, saying to them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him, and wherever he enters, say to the owner of the house, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. So the disciples set out and went to the city, and found everything as he had told them. And they prepared the Passover meal. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it in the kingdom of God. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise be to Please be seated. Friends, uh, as many of you know, uh, Lori, one of our deacons, is also a, an authorized lay worship leader, and she goes and helps lead worship in many of the churches uh, around the region that don't always have as consistent pastoral staffing as we do. Um, and so today, it's our special joy and pleasure to have her come and share a message with us. And so it is our delight to have one of our own, Lori Dunkel, sharing our homily for today. Good morning. Good morning. It's always a blessing to be back home. I do get out to see many congregations, but it's always feels good to be back and share with my family. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. For 25 years, these words can be heard in living rooms across the nation. You are about to enter the courtroom of Judge Judy Shilin. The people are real. The cases are real. The rulings are final. This is Judge Judy. Starting back on September 16, 1996, and running until June 25th of this month, Judge Judy has presided over 260 cases each season for an approximate total of 6,500. This does not take into account the 20,000 plus cases she heard prior to her television debut. Now Judge Judy may rub some people the wrong way with her crass way of speaking. None can deny that she has become extremely successful with her personal and feisty Judaisms such as I'm the boss, applesauce, baloney. Do I have stupid written across my forehead? And one of my favorites, I am here because I'm smart, not because I'm young and beautiful, although I am. Over the years of watching Judge Judy, I have seen a number of cases that are ultimately decided based on one thing, a contract. Now, I have no legal training. I do not impose to understand the law. 
but I do know that agreements made as part of a contract are binding, unless ruled over by someone such as Judge Judy. We have all used them, signed them, agreed to the contents in them. Every one of us has purchased a car or a home, rented an apartment, received treatment from a doctor, or even purchased an animal, have experience with them. Contracts and covenants are everywhere. We establish an agreement between two parties. Essentially, covenants typically describe what is required of each party and the benefits that each party can expect to enjoy. In a relationship between two parties of unequal power, the more powerful person or nation, as in a treaty, would be in a position to dictate the terms of the covenant. In keeping with this reality, God always initiates the covenants with his people and establishes their terms. However, unlike most human covenants, where the terms would favor the more powerful party, covenants between God and humans typically were generous to the man. Throughout the scriptures, we witness many covenants between God and man. There was the covenant with Noah, where God promised that he would never again destroy with flood waters because Noah was a righteous man of God. We, have, we are reminded each time that we see that beautiful bow that God places in the sky. God established another covenant between himself and Abram. God required Abram to leave his father's home and to go to a land that God would show him. In return, God promised to take Abraham, to make Abraham a great nation and to bless him and to make him a blessing to all the families of the earth. But in today's reading, God renews this covenant with Moses. So what is this covenant between God and his people? God promised to drive out Israel's enemies ahead of them if they would remain faithful to him and to the covenant given them through Moses. Moses built an altar as his first sign of the covenantal relationship with God. For an altar meant a place of putting something to death, not only physical, but also in their hearts. The act of sacrifice upon the altar had various parts and meanings. First, Moses took the blood of the sacrifice and divided it. One part he sprinkled on the altar, representing life offered, and poured out to God in sacrifice. This consecrated altar from which the burnt offerings would be placed became a holy place. Now Moses had promised God when he was upon the mountain that he would tell the people every word that God spoke to him and gave to the people. And that is exactly what Moses did. Next, and this is the part that makes me cringe a little bit, Moses took the other part of the blood and threw it on the people so that they too may be consecrated to God. For this, they may seem, this may seem very strange and rather repulsive to us, but Moses understood the sin-filled nature of humans, and that to cover human sin, blood must be shed. As the blood of the old covenant spilled onto the altar and was sprinkled on the people, God revealed his redeeming grace and the forgiving power of his mercy. Finally, upon the altar, the sacrificial animal that was burnt was placed. The altar then became a place where the people, the priest, and God held a meal together to show their relationship of peace and fellowship. It is important to notice that throughout this entire event, 
Moses was obedient to God. God was the one to make and to declare the altar holy ground, not Moses, and definitely not the people. It was God who poured his grace, his mercy, and forgiveness onto the people, not Moses. It was God who called <clears throat> Moses to come to him, not Moses making this decision to go to God. In our gospel reading today, Jesus is getting ready to share the Passover meal with his disciples. Preparations are needed. Finding a location is essential. Jesus sends out his disciples to make the arrangements. Imagine the difficulty of that task. The city of Jerusalem is packed full of pilgrims with the and the instructions are to find a man carrying a pitcher of water. Not only are there probably thousands of people walking around the city, but the task of fetching water was not a man's job. It was a job that women and servants typically would carry out. There is no indication from St. Mark that Jesus prearranged for a man to be walking around and carrying a pitcher of water until the disciples finally found him. I tend to believe that St. Mark is showing us evidence of Jesus' divine foreknowledge. And what about the house? Jesus tells his disciples to go into the house and say, the teacher says, where is the guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? The people of Jerusalem would be expected to accommodate Passover pilgrims into their homes, but demand would be overwhelming. Those arrangements would need to be made far in advance as possible, not just that day. Imagine trying to come to Bedford and finding a free hotel room on a fall foliage weekend. It is just not going to happen. Not only did Jesus tell them to find the man walking with the pitcher of water, follow him to the house, but now the master of the house will show you a large upper room furnished and ready. And it was. And how is any of this even possible? The disciples didn't make it happen. I couldn't make it happen. You can't make it happen. Pastor David and Pastor Short, even with their connections, can't make it happen. The only one that can make it happen is Jesus. Today we celebrate the Feast of Corpus Christi. It is a day within the liturgical calendar to celebrate, celebrate the real presence of the body and blood, soul and divinity of Jesus Christ in the elements of the Eucharist. When Jesus sat down to eat the Passover meal with his disciples, he was doing more than just sharing a memorial meal with all that were partaking in that night. He was preparing his disciples for what laid ahead, and he was preparing us. He knew that he would soon face his death, a death of the most horrific nature, and a resurrection like no other. Jesus knew that he was the sacrifice upon the altar so that God's people could be consecrated, reconciled, and brought back into a right relationship with God our Father. It is his blood that was shed as an atoning sacrifice. It was his body that was broken, that signed, sealed, and secured the true covenant between God and man. In the waters of baptism, we have the assurance of salvation, a salvation that cannot be taken away because God said it is so. We have been marked and we have been named as a child of God. And as a child of God, he promised to protect, nurture, and feed us until we are able to eat with him at the great banquet. 
So as we come to the altar this morning to receive the precious body and blood of Christ, Christ nurtures and feeds us. His body and blood sustains us. And like Moses and all the saints, we gather around the altar in fellowship and dwell in the presence of God. Amen. Friends, I invite you to rise. Together we make profession of the Christian faith we share. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate in the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We pray for Christ's Holy Church, for nations and communities, and for our brothers and sisters throughout creation. We pray for the Church that we would care well for the sacraments entrusted to us and be a place where the grace, forgiveness, and presence of God is found in this world. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for our congregation that we would enjoy the richness, richness of our God together and share the gospel with our community in wise, generous, and effective ways. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who lead others, that they may serve well in their positions and work hard for a lasting benefit of all. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for eyes of faith, that we would recognize Christ's true body and blood in the Eucharist and grow in appreciation of the abundance that God shares with us each and every day. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for hope that the resurrected body of Christ shared with us in the Eucharist would be for us a foretaste of the feast to come and set our hope towards the future resurrection when God makes all things new. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for refreshment, that the Holy Spirit would use the summer months to recharge and enliven our spirits so that we may enter the future with faithful excitement and energy. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick and ill, that the Holy Spirit might renew their bodies, lift their spirits, and draw loved ones and caregivers to their side. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for all who have died and for all who mourn, that Christ, the resurrection, and the life might be their hope, their promise, and their consolation. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray for the saints of the church, especially we remember St. Barnabas, 
son of encouragement. May his example of fidelity, perseverance, and joy teach and inspire us as we live out our faith in the present age. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, gracious Father, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. We share a sign of welcome and peace with one another. It's with you. As we rise. Let us pray together. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Almighty and merciful God, you are most holy and great is the majesty of your glory. You so loved the world that you gave your only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. We give you thanks for his coming into the world to fulfill for us your holy will and to accomplish all things for our salvation. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Remembering then his salutary command, his life-giving passion and death, his glorious resurrection and ascension, and the promise of his coming again, we give thanks to you, O Lord God Almighty, not as we ought, but as we are able. We ask you mercifully to accept our praise and thanksgiving, and with your word and Holy Spirit to bless us, your servants, and these your own gifts of bread and wine, that we and all who share in the body and blood of Christ may be filled with heavenly blessing and grace, and receiving the forgiveness of sin may be formed to live as your holy people and given our inheritance with all your saints. For to you, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be all honor and glory in your holy church, now and forever. Amen. 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 Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come. today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. worthy to receive you. But only speak the word, and I shall be healed. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. Or are you comfortable checking downstairs? I don't know if there's folks there.
friends, I invite you to rise. May the blessing of Almighty God and these gifts of his Son's body and blood strengthen, keep, and unite us unto everlasting life. Amen. Amen. We pray together. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us toward the you and in fervent love toward one another for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you, being gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and bring you in peace. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. on this feast of Corpus Christi as we celebrate the body and blood of Christ and give thanks for the many, many graces, sacrifices, and mercies that God shares with us. As we look to the week ahead, uh, just a reminder that if you have children that are looking to register for VBS, please try to get them registered online by this coming Sunday. That's sort of our deadline to pre-register, and if you pre-register by that time, you'll get a free music CD that you'll, you'll just get to listen to for the next year of your life together. Um, so please pre-register for that. With VBS, that begins June 28th. Um, we're co-hosting uh, that with the Presbyterian Church. We have full use of the square, so we're going to keep the kids outside as much as possible, and when they're inside, they're going to be very, very spread out. Um, but the masks will be optional for kids for that VBS week um, as we look at all sorts of changes happening in our community right now. Uh, but again, please try to pre-register by next Sunday. That gives Liz plenty of time to get things together, and it'll also get you a free music CD for that week together. Any other announcements for the good of the community? Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. 